In this video, we'll look at creating new post objects and then persisting them using local storage. Now, of course, local storage won't work for a multi user app as the storage is bound to the browser, but it will suffice for our project. In a real world app, this could very easily be substituted for something simple like CouchDB or even a service based storage like Past. I'll link to this in the resources if you want to check them out. Okay, in this admin view, we want the ability to create a new post. So I'll add a link to slash new, which will be our new post view, and say create new post. Add a button class, make it a primary button, save, and we get that link button. I'll just float this to the right also. Then we can define that root. I'll duplicate this admin root again. Say new. Mount the editor tag. Now you'll see later why I call this editor, but essentially we'll be using the same view for both creating and updating posts. At this point, you might notice that we're repeating the same logic in each root. So I'll simplify this a bit by creating a new helper function to mount a tag as a main view. Call it blog set view. Pass an argument of view, which is the tag we want to mount. Riot mount on the view element. Then pass in the view tag. And replace these existing roots with that helper function. Just keeps the code a bit more tidy. Save that, create the editor tag. Add a heading again for testing. And when we click that create new post button, we see the editor view. This view is going to consist of mainly a form for entering the new post details, so I'll start by creating that. And we don't need any of these form attributes as we'll be handling the form submission on the client with Riot. Add the post title input, type text, and call it post title, placeholder. Save that, and I want this to be full width. So I'll just add a skeleton helper class again, view full width, then add a new row as I want the post author and post category fields to be on the same line. Another text input, call it post author. And the same for post category. Skeleton provides a simple 12 column grid, so I'll make these each 6 columns, or 50% of the row. Say 6 columns, save. Looks a bit better. Then for the post content, I'll add a text area, call it post content, and make that full width also. And finally, add another row for the submit button. Input type, submit. Don't need a name for this. Set the value to publish, which will be the button text. And I'll make that a primary button also. Floats right. Now, to tweak the styling of this form a bit, we can create a style tag in this tag file and give it that scoped attribute as we want to only apply these styles to the editor tag. Make that post title a bit bigger, so I'll say title and I'll add that class now. Height, say 75 pixels, font size 30 pixels.
save and better, but I'll make the text pull that input a bit better, say 36 pixels. There we go. Make that text area a bit taller, 300. And make sure it cannot be resized larger than 100%. And might as well limit it to an absolute 100%. So only allow height resizing. That looks about right. Next, we can define a script tag and start adding some logic for creating a new post. I'll start by defining an instance method called addPost, which will handle the form submission. And just use a simple log message for now, adding post. And then to call this method when the form gets submitted, I'll say on this form element, on submit equals the right expression, add post. Save that. And now when I add a new post by hitting return or clicking the submit button, we see that log message in the console. So this works. I'll get rid of that log message and inside this method create a new variable called new post. This will be our new post object, so start with title and we'll grab that value from this.posttitle, so referencing that post title input field by name, dot value to get the input value. And then just the same for author, category, and content. Check this object by logging into the console. I'll just enter some values into the post fields. Submit, and we see that new post object in the console with all the corresponding values as I set it. Next, we want to create a way of managing posts across the app. And if you recall the lesson on mix-ins, this is a perfect way to share functionality across tag instances. I'll create a new JavaScript file in the JS directory, call it posts.js, and then in this file, define a Riot mix-in, Now, normally we'd name this mixin, in our case probably posts, to allow other tags to selectively include this functionality. But as posts is pretty much the core of our app, this is going to be used by most, if not all, of our tags. So for that reason, I'll leave out the name and declare it as a global mixin. This means that this mixin will be available in all our tags by default. Then I'll define an init method. This is the mixin method that gets called immediately once a tag includes the mixin. So, much like most standard classes behave in other programming languages with constructors. Now, as I mentioned, we'll be using local storage to persist our posts. Local storage, of course, being a simple key value based store and the values being simple integers or strings. I link to a local storage tutorial in the resources for those not familiar with how it works first thing inside this init method is to get the posts object from local storage. Say this.post, this being the tag instance that's inheriting the mixin, json.pass, and we'll be storing our posts object as a JSON string, local storage.getItem, posts. Okay, let's run over this one more time. When a mixin references this, it refers to the tag instance using the mixin. Our post objects will be stored in an array as a simple JSON string in local storage. So once a tag inherits this mixin, the mixin will provide an array of posts that it got from local storage to the tag as the instance variable posts. Then just to make sure this array is set, I'll say if not local storage dot get item posts, then local storage set item posts to an empty array string. Of course we're passing this empty array as a string as that's what it will look like in the JSON format. 
This just ensures that once we start adding posts, our posts array is ready and exists. That should do for the init method for now. I'll also create a save method to persist our updated posts array in local storage. And of course, this time we want to do the opposite. So var post string equals json dot stringify this dot posts. That's now our new JSON string of the posts array. Save that to local storage with local storage dot set item posts. So overwriting that existing posts key. Post string. We can test this. Back to the editor tag and log this dot post. Save. And we get undefined. That would be because we haven't actually linked to the post.js file. Do that. Save. And we see that empty array being logged the second the page reloads. We can now go ahead and add this new post object to the end of the posts array by saying this.posts.push new post. Run save, that mix in method. And then once our post has been added, redirect back to the home page. Riot.root home or slash. For the moment of truth, make this a bit bigger. Say my first post, Ray Ulyun. JavaScript and some content. Click that submit button and we get redirected to the home page as expected. We can check if the post was saved by adding back that log message. And we see an array with a single object which when I expand it, contains all the post info as we entered it. Let's just reiterate the process of creating a post. First, we create that post object, populate it with values directly from the form input. And of course, in a real world app, you'd want to filter and validate these, but we won't get into that. Then we push the post object to the posts array, obtained from the posts mixin, save the posts array to local storage, again calling that save method provided by the posts mixin, and finally redirect back to the home page where that new post should now be displayed on the blog roll. We'll tackle that in the next video.